Today, we are talking about the Hunter Hunter Iceberg. What is an iceberg? Well, it's a chart that organizes memes and information from the most well-known to the most obscure. You can find one of these charts for pretty much everything. And today, we are going to be looking at one that I compiled for Hunter Hunter. So let's get started above the water. This area is generally reserved for the most common knowledge, so we won't be spending a ton of time here. First up, we have Oh Gone. This one is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically just Ahsoka's reaction to Gon in general, but especially when Gon is impressing him. Hiatus obviously references the ongoing four-year-long hiatus from the manga and the many hiatuses that have occurred in the past due to Tagashi's health issues. Next up is the X being silent. Again, also self-explanatory. All of the Xs you see in Hunter x Hunter titles or episode names are just silent. You don't pronounce them. This is because in-universe, the X is symbolic of a space. Next we have movies. Over the course of Hunter x Hunter's run, there has been at least two non-canon movies that were developed for entertainment and to basically generate revenue. In my opinion, they're pretty mediocre and probably not worth watching, but one of them does have a bit of Karapika's backstory. Speaking of Karapika's backstory, next we have Volume Zero. This is basically the pilot of Hunter x Hunter. It's a prequel that focuses on Karapika's backstory, his friendship with Pyro, and of course, the massacre of the Kurta. Next up, we have Killua being gay. This point refers to the theory that Killua is gay. A lot of the evidence for this theory exists in his relationship with Gon, especially when saying lines like this or this. I also think it might partially come from his fashion sense. Because, I mean, just look at it. And the final point in Tier 1 is bungee gum having the properties of both rubber and gum. This refers to Hisoka's ability bungee gum, which has the properties of both rubber and gum. This sentence has become a very popular meme within the fandom, and honestly, I don't really know why. Anyway, before you can think about that for too long, let's move on to Tier 2. Starting with the Bakaki El Dagra cameo. Have you ever wondered who this random guy is? Well, that is Bakaki El Dagra a character from Tagashi's previous work, Level E. This cameo has also created the fictitious theory that Hunter x Hunter actually exists in the same universe as Level E. Gon's arm references how Gon injures his arm in almost every single arc. It gets broken by Hanzo in the exam arc, broken by the top guy in Heaven's Arena, blown up in Greed Island, and severed by P2 in the Chimera Ant arc. From what I can remember, nothing major happens to his arm in York New, and obviously it's still severed in the Election arc. Next up is how the main characters all have similar birthdays. In case you didn't know, Leorio was born on March 3rd, Karapika was born on April 4th, Gon was born on May 5th, and Killua was born on July 7th. So what happened to June 6th? Well, that's actually the day that Hisoka was born. Just a fun little detail that's also pretty easily missable. Nanika being I is less of a theory at this point and more of a fact that has been confirmed in the manga. In case you didn't know, the I are one of the five calamities of the Dark Continent. It's pretty much confirmed by this extra page in volume 33. P2's gender refers to the ambiguity surrounding the topic. In the anime, they are very much portrayed as a girl, but Tagashi uses it as the pronouns, and in the manga they are portrayed more as male rather than female. Hisoka and Illumi being married comes from when Illumi said, For our engagement ring, he gave me a prenup where if he dies, I still collect. The main focus here being the engagement ring part. However, depending on the translation, this line is completely different, and it is most likely that he did not mean they are actually like married, he meant they had some sort of agreement upon Hisoka's death. Aluka being trans is on here because it's a topic that has created a ton of confusion within some fans. This is because the majority of her family refers to her using he, him pronouns, but Kilua refers to Aluka using she, her. It is very likely that the reason Aluka's family refers to her with the wrong pronouns is out of disrespect, as there is plenty of evidence for Aluka being trans. In fact, there is an entire dissertation style Google document that covers every single instance of gendered terminology in reference to Aluka, and it also comes with a lot of supporting evidence, pretty much confirming that Aluka is in fact trans. Next we have 1999 Kilua being a perv. I had a bit of trouble finding what this referenced, but I'm pretty sure this point references the filler scene in the 1999 anime where it is implied that Kilua is watching some sort of adult entertainment, if you catch my drift. In this scene, he also tries to convince Gon to watch it with him, but as I said, this scene is completely filler, so it's also not true. Leorio is packing also references another filler scene from the 1999 adaptation where Karapika sees Leorio completely naked and is quite startled by what he sees. Like I 
said this is also a filler scene, so it doesn't really mean much, but it wouldn't really be a surprise if this man was packing. Zigzoldic and Mahazoldic being the same person is a theory that originates from the fact that they're both old and they both knew Netero. We don't know much about either of these characters, so it's hard to say if it's true or not, but I guess it could be possible if Zig changed his name later on or something. Next we have Crollo Lucifer. Yes, that says Crollo Lucifer. According to Tagashi, that is how you spell Crollo Lucifer, as it is spelled that way in volume 34 of the manga. I'm just glad they didn't go that way for the actual translations. The entire Phantom Troop dying is another fairly common theory. It stems from the current situation of the Phantom Troop as they are all split up within the boat, which is a pretty dangerous place to be for them in general. On top of being wanted criminals in the same space as the Zodiacs, Krapika is also on board. On top of this, Tagashi already confirmed in an interview that the entire troop will die before the story is over. Only time will tell how that plays out. Phaeton being a Zoldic is yet another popular fan theory. It stems from Phaeton's use of assassination techniques, and also the freakishly sharp finger thing, which only him and Kilawa have been seen doing. However, there are a lot of factors that debunk this theory, such as Kilawa and Illumi not recognizing him, and the fact that he's not a manipulator like the rest of the dark-haired Zoldics. Yu Yu Hakusho Easter Eggs refers to the Easter Eggs for Tagashi's previous work. We can see Pu in episode 41, Hai on a wanted poster in episode 1, and Tsukasa in a book in episode 1 as well. Some people think this means the two shows take place in the same universe, but there's really no evidence to support this past the Easter Eggs. And the final topic for the second tier is Phaeton's first language, which is actually Chinese. Yep, in the 1999 adaptation he has very poor grammar in the Japanese version, and his English is well, let's just say it has an aged well. On top of this, when he uses the pain packer technique, he also speaks in Chinese, and some people think in the 2011 version, it sounds like he's speaking Japanese with a Chinese accent. Let's move down to tier 3, which is where things start to get a little bit more crazy. The first one references how Kortopi's name is an anagram for Kopi Wartoru, which means copied items in Japanese. The phantom troop representing Jesus and his 12 disciples is a pretty simple but easily missable theory. Kurlo and the phantom troop are most likely a negative version of Jesus and his 12 disciples. Crollo obviously being the opposite of Jesus as he's the leader, and he also has his jacket which has the St. Peter's cross on the back. On top of this, it seems Ahsoka is playing the role of Judas as he betrays Crollo to help the protagonists, in this case, Karapika. I'd be very interested to see if any of the other members line up with the 12 disciples, but I don't know anything about Christianity so you might have to do that research on your own. The theory that the Kurta originated from the Dark Continent is another interesting but simple theory. It basically states that the Kurta clan originated from the dark continent, but crossed the seas in order to find a more habitable area. This would make sense considering how deadly the dark continent seems to be, and would also explain why Kurta people in general are so strong. Like even Uvo, a master enhancer, considered the clan to be a tough opponent, despite the clan having little to no knowledge of Nen. This next theory about Hisoka wanting to kill Killua has some sensitive topics such as sexual assault, so if you want to skip it, there will be a chapter down below for you. In the scene where Hisoka says that he wants to kill Killua, the actual verb that he uses in the manga is to do, which can mean to either kill Kilawa or have sex with Kilawa. It is also accompanied by this hand position, which is apparently some sort of sign for sex in Japanese. So it's likely Hisoka did not mean he actually wanted to kill Kilawa, but maybe, yeah, you can fill in the rest. Believe it or not, there were actually two Hunter x Hunter musicals in Japan in the early 2000s. The first one was The Nightmare of Zoldic, which focused on the Kilua recovery arc with some additional scenes. The other was Musical Hunter x Hunter, which covered the time between the York New Arc and Greed Island. Obviously, neither of these are canon. The Pregnancy Stone Theory is a pretty well-known theory that states that Gon doesn't actually have a mom, and that Zhang impregnated himself using the Pregnancy Stone card from Greed island. I think this is mostly a fun theory that people just kind of joke about, but like there's also not really anything refuting it. The next theory we have is Leorio and Benol originating from the same town. This theory is based on the backstory of Leorio and the backstory of Benol, as both of their flashbacks seem to take place in similar looking towns. There's literally nothing else to this theory, but is a cool coincidence and it's not impossible, just very unlikely. Pyro's head references the theory that the head behind Suridnich is Karapika's friend Pyro. 
People draw the comparison between the two heads, and it would also make sense as the head is surrounded by the scarlet eyes. However, one major debunking factor is that the fourth prince does collect bodily trophies in general, so it could just be some random head that he really admires. Peristen playing a role in the Kurta massacre is probably the longest theory on this list. The theory stems from the similarities between Peristen and the character Sheila. Sheila is a woman that Karapika and Pyro found in the woods while on a walk. Her and Peristen look very similar, and she also has rat ears, with Peristen being the rat zodiac. On top of this, she's also pursuing being a hunter, which Peristen is. Obviously, these similarities are pretty weak, but we have to accept them to get to the actual theory. The theory states that while Sheila, Peristen, was in the woods, she wasn't actually hurt. She was actually searching for the Kurta clan, and she was waiting to see if anyone would come along and give her a lead to the location of the Kurta. And she then got in contact with the Phantom Troop to give them the location of the clan. Obviously, this theory has a ton of holes in it, and I don't think there's really any evidence for it to be believable, but let me know what you think in the comments down below. Nasubi's chamber is the subject of a lot of theorization in Hunter x Hunter. I mean, just look at it. It looks so suspicious. On top of this, there's 14 coffins, which implies that he intends to somehow kill off every single prince. The main theory as to why Nasubi would try to do this is that it would give him some incredible power, but we don't have enough information to confirm this or deny it. The next theory is Wing is a battle Olympia champion. There isn't that much to back up this claim, but there also isn't a lot to discredit it. When we saw Wing, Kilua and Gon were brand new to Nen, meaning they were most likely unfamiliar with the signs of identifying a great Nen user. This means it's unlikely that they would have been able to see the smoothness or density of Wing's aura, so it's very possible that Wing is much more powerful than we know, and we just never saw it because of when he was introduced in the series. I think Jenny inflation refers to the fact that yen and currency in general has gotten more inflated over the past few years, but I want to talk about something much more interesting that I found in my research, which is Jenny deflation. In volume 0, Pyro points out that this entire jar of Jenny is just one Jenny, and later we see that Jenny is actually just one yen, so it's basically the smallest denominator for money in the Hunter x Hunter universe. This is very interesting because it implies either a change to how Jenny works, or some sort of deflation in the currency, or Tagashi just wanted to show that the critter were kind of poor, or it just wasn't 100% thought out yet. Anyway, the next topic is the origin of the chimera ants. It's a fairly standard theory that the chimera ants actually originated from the dark continent. I think this is kind of confirmed by Zhang, but I'm not 100% sure. It would make sense for a giant chimera ant queen to originate from the dark continent because of the rampant gigantism on that continent, but I also think it's very unlikely that it would actually survive the ocean trip considering how long and hostile it is. There's a much more interesting theory regarding the origin of the chimera ants, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. The final theory in tier 3 is coded hiatus pattern. I'm pretty sure this one is just someone trying to rationalize some sort of pattern in the hiatus chart, so I think it's pretty obvious that there's not actually anything here. Let's move on to tier 4. This is where theories start to get pretty out there, and also hard to research. So I apologize if you're really interested in one of these points, and I don't spend a lot of time on it. The first point we have is the Hunter website being on the deep web. This has two very different interpretations. It could mean that the Hunter website in Hunter x Hunter is on the deep web in universe. This would make sense as it's not available to the public, meaning it's just on the deep web. However, the other interpretation is that the Hunter website is on our deep web in real life. This is a fun idea to think about, especially considering how much there actually is to the deep web in our world, and that it's likely there is some secret communication going on there. Kamugi's Ant Extermination Task is one of the theories I couldn't find much about online. If I had to guess, it's probably a theory that Kamugi was somehow involved in like the punitive force in order to alter Miram's perception of humanity, or to use her gongi skills to somehow force Miram to put his life on the line. I think this theory is pretty much impossible to confirm and is pretty much debunked, but if someone wants to develop it, I think it could be interesting. The V5 Secret Labs is another one I couldn't really get any information on, mostly because of the Secret Lab V5 gaming chair, which took up like most of the result pages. So you can thank capitalism for that one. These next two kind of go hand in hand. The theory is that experienced Nen users are able to alter the results of water divination because they understand how to manipulate their aura to a high degree, meaning they would be able to hide their true affiliation. This theory has caused some fans to wonder if Wing altered his water divination in order to hide his true affiliation from the boys and Zushi. There's really no reason for Wing to hide this, but considering how integral information is in a Nen battle, it would make sense to hide even your affiliation. A 2045 anime adaptation is just poking fun at the extended production time of Hunter x Hunter, as it is honestly quite likely we won't get the final adaptation for at least a couple of decades. Next, we have the spider tattoo being a Nen condition. The 
This is an interesting theory because we know that just about anything could be considered a Nen condition. It could be that getting the Phantom Troops tattoo improves Nen output as many of the troop members are prolific in Nen without any formal training. It's also very possible that it affects their Nen in some other way as well, but we have no proof of this in any way shape or form. We've also seen quite a few Nen users who have met or surpassed the abilities of the troop, so if it is some sort of condition it would also be a pretty weak one. Next we have the Netero assassination plot theory. This theory states that Netero death was actually a large-scale assassination plot planned in part by Beyond. Beyond wanted Netero dead as he was banned from going back to the Dark Continent until after the old man's death. The theory states that the Chimera Ant Queen was genetically engineered by humans, and it was dropped in the ocean off of the coast of NGL to give her the greatest chance of procreating and creating a Chimera Ant Crisis. The Hunter Association would then be tasked with solving this crisis, and it would eventually lead to Netero's death. Obviously, we did see the second part of this theory play out, but it's hard to say if the reasoning in the first part of this theory is all the sound, as there are quite a few chance events that have to happen for an ant as powerful as Meruem to come into existence. Next we have Nanaka's power limitations. I believe this is supposed to point out that Nanaka's power is most likely tied to how many people they can kill after a wish, meaning that there is a theoretical limit to her power, that being a wish that requires the entire human population to be killed. However, it's also possible that Nanaka will just start killing things other than humans, so it's hard to say if there's really a limit to this power until we see it. Wing tried to kill Gon I think refers to two different things. The first could be that when doing the Nen Awakening, he intended to kill Kilua and Gon, but he failed for one reason or another. And the other is referencing this scene where he's seen reaching out to Gon for some reason or another. This theory is pretty easily debunked, because if Wing actually wanted to kill Gon, he could have just let the kid continue into Hisoka's Ren. The final tier 4 theory is that Nen is real. This theory stems from the fact that Nen is basically controlling the energy a human naturally produces in the form of aura. Humans in our world also produce energy via heat, and according to some research studies, we produce about 100 to 300 watts of energy a day, meaning that if humans could harness and control this energy, we would produce Nen. Obviously this is far-fetched and 100% not true, but it's still interesting to look at the similarities between how Nen is produced and how we produce energy ourselves. Alright, let's move on to the fifth and final tier. This tier is fairly short, but it has some of the most bizarre and honestly hard to research theories in the entire iceberg. Let's get started with the first one, which is a Shuisha Epstein link. I think this is most likely referring to some kind of connection between Jeffrey Epstein and some of the executives at Shuisha. Shuisha is based basically the owner of Shonen Jump, and they basically decide what manga is run in it, meaning they do have a degree of control over Hunter x Hunter. However, even after some deep research, I couldn't find any connections between the two, but it's also hard to research Japanese companies because the sites don't always translate that well, if at all. I would have to say this theory is inconclusive and overall pretty unlikely. Humanity is a calamity is a very interesting theory and it's basically what it sounds like. It's very possible that humanity itself originated from the Dark Continents, and considering what humanity is capable of, I don't think it's too far of a stretch to say that it could also be considered a calamity. The next theory is that Hunter x Hunter was written in the 17th century. I honestly couldn't find any information on this one, but I think it might relate to this cover which mirrors this painting. It could also be that Hunter x Hunter was heavily inspired by some 17th century work, but there's so much literature from that time period that I could literally search for months at a time and still not be able to confirm or deny this. As a result, I'm going to have to say this one is probably inconclusive conclusive as well, but not completely impossible. And now we come to the final theory on the iceberg, which is the York New 9-11 conspiracy. Obviously, I'm not saying there's any connection between these two, and it's basically based on like three coincidences, like how the Phantom Troops attack took place in September at a building with two towers, and in this arc, Karapika kills both the 9th and the 11th spiders. But honestly, this really just feels like it's a disrespectful theory, and I don't think there's any connection besides these coincidences. It really really just feels like some 14 year old saw that York knew was New York and decided to run with it. And that's the end of the iceberg. I'll link the icebergs that I used in the description down below, and if you take a look at these you'll probably notice that one of these has way more information that I didn't cover. The main reason behind that is I couldn't get information on 99% of its theories, and I'm pretty sure it was either made out of satire, or just someone that was driven to the edge of sanity by the 4 year hiatus. Thank you all for watching, if you like Hunter x Hunter content, be sure to subscribe, I have a lot more coming in the near future, and I'm very excited for when the manga returns. Thank you again, and I'll see you next week. Probably.